Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I wanted to have a look at the new smart orders that are going to be added alongside the new DLC Death on the Vistula. This is a free update for everybody, so regardless of whether or not you buy the new DLC or the history pass, you will have access to this feature. Based on what the devs have said so far, the idea of smart orders is to improve the quality of life for all players. So smart orders. What are they? What do they do? Well, they are orders for larger groups of units. So you can give an entire group of units a hold position order, for example, and they will try and hold that position to the best of their ability using the terrain provided to them. So rather than having to micro all of your units individually, you can now select a bunch of infantry and tell them to defend a certain point and then leave them there and they'll do that for you for the rest of the game until you tell them to do otherwise. Smart orders are now located on the bottom right of the UI, just above the orders panel. By selecting a unit, you can see which smart orders are available to them. There are currently six smart orders in the game. We have seize and hold position for more offensive forces like infantry, tanks, and any direct firing units. And then for artillery, we have three new commands, fire at will, counter battery, and defensive fire. Planes also have one order, and that is auto strike. Now at the moment, those won't mean much, but let me go through them for you. I've set up a game against the medium AI, I've given them just a bunch of infantry and a lot of artillery. I'm going to test out these orders and I'm going to explain them along the way. So let's start with the first one, Seize. When you select a number of units and give them a Seize order, those units will do their best to take that position in a tactical fashion. So they'll use a number of Move and Attack Move commands to get to that position and engage enemy units on the way. If you are using infantry, they will try to use cover as they engage the enemy units. If you are using vehicles, then they'll just generally go straight towards it and attack things along the way. As they are attempting to take a position, generally the units will fan out in order to find all of the units in that area, especially if the front line is pushed over a certain section of it. So in general, the command is actually quite intuitive especially if you don't want to micro to find the one remaining unit in a particular area. Another use for the seize command is if you select units that haven't come in yet, say four units of infantry, you can select them before you click them on the map, actually select the seize order, click where you want the seize orders to be, and then all of the units that are brought in from your mouse cursor will automatically pursue a seize order to where you've selected. Units in transports that you give a seize order to will automatically unload before they reach the seize order location in order to then proceed with that order. This way, if your units are coming in off the map, they don't just run into the enemy and die. They will unload early to make sure that doesn't happen. In future, this will really help people like myself, who often get quite a lot of infantry killed because you don't unload it before the enemy fire at you. Whereas if you are using a seize order, this will happen automatically. There are certainly a lot of cases where this order should be overrided by your own micro, especially when it comes to tanks near buildings and so on, because otherwise they're quite likely to run into things like Panzerfaust, Panzerschrex, and a lot of close range AT. Well, for infantry, I think the seize order is really, really handy for just finding those last remaining units in an area that are being a pain. The next order is hold position. Now, hold position is the default after using the seize order. So once a unit has completed a seize order, it will move to the hold position order. You can also tell your unit specifically to hold a position that they are currently in. By clicking on the hold position order, your units will automatically seek cover, either heavy cover in forests or maybe a building nearby. They will also relocate depending on the tactical situation. So if the position they are defending with the hold position command is attacked from the side, they will move to that side in order to be able to fire at the enemy. This can be really, really useful if you're not particularly paying attention to a certain area of the map at the right time. 
because your units will automatically move to fend off an attack from a particular direction. I reckon this could be particularly useful for AT guns that you put in a tree line. The reason being is the AT gun with the hold position command will automatically move to the right edge of the tree line in order to engage the units approaching. So again, another really intuitive command. In certain situations, I think it could be better if you micro. And I think in most situations, honestly, with these commands, you're gonna be better off if you micro. But for those times when you just don't have the ability to control all of the units at once, these commands are really, really gonna help out. Next up we have the artillery commands, the first one being defensive fire. Defensive fire works by covering a specific area. So you select defensive fire, you put down the location where you would like your artillery to fire and they will fire at anything revealed in the area that you have placed. This is particularly useful for things like mortars if you are going to make an offensive play because the mortars will automatically fire at any positions that are ahead of your troops if you place the defensive fire order in the right place. It's basically a way of telling your artillery to concentrate their automated fire on a certain area of the map. Larger artillery could probably also use this, but due to the fact they take longer to aim, I don't think they'll be as effective with this order. Next on the UI we have the counter battery command. This command is incredibly useful for those of you who don't want to micro counter battery throughout the game. How it works is you click on a unit, you select counter battery, and then from now on the artillery will be assigned to that role. Those units will fire at known or detected enemy artillery positions. That includes artillery positions that have been shown previously if no other artillery is shown on the map or at currently detected units. I believe detected enemy artillery units will always take priority with this order. So if you want to continue to focus one that you can't see anymore then you'll probably have to do that manually. But I found in my tests the counter battery option is really really good. It basically allows you to play your artillery a lot like the AI does and just persistently hit their artillery even though you aren't necessarily paying attention to microing your artillery. The final order for artillery on the UI is fire at will. This allows an artillery unit to fire at any unit within their range. This is particularly useful for larger artillery pieces that you may not want to micro and will just allow them to constantly fire at any position they see. Now the trouble with this command is that it won't always be firing at the units you necessarily want them to, it might be firing at something completely random on the corner of the map, but this can be overwritten by the defensive fire command if you want something more specific. Or, better than that, use the fire position command. But if you don't want to have your artillery idle throughout the game, then the fire at will order is certainly your best bet. The final order to be mentioned is auto strike and this is used for planes. If a fighter is set to auto strike it will automatically launch from base when an enemy aircraft is spotted. If auto strike is used with a bomber it will automatically bomb a unit when it appears on the map or maybe it's a unit that's been seen previously but either way the bomber will automatically launch as soon as you click the button to a random target on the map. This command I believe also works for attack planes like the HS129s with their AT shells. They will go and attack suitable targets as soon as the button is hit. If you don't want your bombers idle then this may be a way to use them especially in single player. It could be very very useful for just allowing your abundance of aircraft to just go and hit targets constantly without you having to micro them all. But in multiplayer, I believe that this could put your bombers in awkward situations, especially if your opponent's using a lot of AA. And I've also experienced friendly fire where a bomber that's been on auto strike has tried to bomb a unit that's right next to my own and therefore almost pinned down my own units. 
though I reckon the auto strike command is going to be useful for bombers more specifically in single player but it may be really useful to have auto strike on your fighters so that as soon as an enemy player or the AI brings in a plane you have fighters to respond especially if you're busy microing your front line with, with a tank or something that you're trying to adjust front armor for for example either way that's your lot that's all of the commands just to reiterate we have C's which is where your units will attempt to attack or take a particular point it will then transition into the hold position command the hold position command orders your units to take up cover in nearby area and shift to wherever they are being attacked from then we have the defensive fire order which is used for concentrating artillery on a specific area to help offensive operations or maybe even defensive operations. There is counter battery, which allows you to automatically target enemy artillery that have either been previously spotted or are currently spotted. And then there is the fire at will order, which allows your artillery to not be idle and just target any target they see on the map that is within range. Finally, auto strike used for aircraft, auto launches fighters against enemy aircraft, auto launches bombers against previously seen units on the ground or current seen units on the ground. Same deal with attack aircraft, but they will attack suitable targets for their munitions. And that's your lot. So that's my breakdown of the smart orders and brief opinions on them as well. For the most part, I think they're going to be incredibly helpful in single player, that's for sure. But in multiplayer, I think you're going to have to have a good combination of the current micro orders as well as maybe some smart orders for where you're not paying as much attention. In general, great improvement to the game. Definitely, I think, is going to be well received. And it's another awesome quality of life improvement for games made by Eugen Systems. And I think, honestly, if there's one thing that Eugen Systems does very well with their games, is every single game they bring out these new quality of life improvements that no other game has. One in particular that I absolutely love is being able to give orders to your units before the game starts. There are so many games in the RTS genre at the moment that could use that update. A good example is the Total War games. But without getting further off topic, that's about it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more Steel Division 2 content in the future. That's it, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.